Hello and welcome to Share, Learn, Connect. I am Georgia Lutby and I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the various lands on which we meet today. Down employs people across more than 300 sites, primarily in Australia and New Zealand, but also in the Asia-Pacific region, South America and Africa. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging and recognise and celebrate the diversity of First Peoples across all of the various lands, their ongoing cultures and connections to the land, sea and community. You are going to love our topic and guest today where we talk about all things responsibility. Responsibility is that kind of concept that can have different meanings depending on the context. Getting to work on time, taking care of children, paying taxes, they are all types of responsibility. More recently though, a type of responsibility has become more prominent and that is social responsibility. Social responsibility means that individuals and companies have a duty to act not only in their best interests, but also in the interests of society and the environment around them. This can include actions such as supporting local communities, reducing carbon footprints, protecting cultural heritage, amongst many other things. Our guests today are no strangers to this month's topic and it's with great excitement that I welcome two Māori leaders within Downer. Julie Waitai is a delivery manager for the Tūbō region and Robert Martiti, a maintenance supervisor in the Gisborne region. Welcome Julie and Rob, can you tell us a little bit about yourselves? We'll start with you Julie. So normally when we introduce ourselves, what we do is we talk about where we come from and people who are in the room and who are Māori will relate to that. So when I meet usually someone that's older than me the first question they say is where do you come from some people kind of like huh what are you talking about I come from Wellington <laughs> you know that kind of stuff but what they're trying to do is find that connection so what waka did you come from what is a waka a canoe thank you yeah. and that's one of the stories when the Maori migrated to New Zealand they all came in wakas so as soon as you say what your waka is then there's a connection especially with the older people sometimes you name who you come from because you've got a big whanau you talk about the word whanau can you tell our listeners Listeners who may not be familiar with that term, what it means. So Fano to me is about connecting with other people and they don't need to be your own blood. They can be people that you care about or care for. And it's one of the pillars that we talk about our well-being and it's called Te Whare Tapa Whare and it's one of the cornerstones is Fano. So we care for people that we feel like they need us or we just have a connection and we want to be a part of them and they want to be a part of us. And so we, we build that relationship and then you have a kind of like an unspoken rule on how you actually behave with each other. So my big whānau is called Hortini. And so as soon as I say Hortini and someone has a connection with them somewhere. So my one is ko tainui te waka, ko waikato te awa, ko taupere te maunga, ko nati hoa te iwi, ko nati wereweri te hapu, ko kaiata mata te marae, ko Hortini tuku whānau, ko Julie taku ingoa, nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kato. How about you, Rob? Kia ora everyone, yes, so ko Horoto te waka, ko Puketapu te maunga, ko Te Arai Tūru te awa, ko Rongofakata te iwi, ko Ngāti Ruapani te hapu, ko Ohako te marae, ko Rapata Māte te ahau. The way I look at it is that the reason why I start off with my waka is that when our people arrived here, they were in that waka, the first thing they would have seen was a maunga. When they got to the maunga, the first thing they would have needed was a drink, so then becomes the awa, and then from the awa, they would have needed a build a home, so here comes the marae, and then from the marae, there's their foundation. There's their te whara tapawha, then they create whānau, and then the whānau multiply, and there you go, you have an iwi. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I have loved hearing this from you. It's so rich. I can feel it. I can see it. I can understand it. It's absolutely beautiful. Our podcast today, we're going to talk a lot about responsibility. And at Downer, we define responsibility as being responsible and accountable for the care and protection of our peers and the business communities in which we operate and the environment. What does responsible mean to you and to your Fano? Responsibility, to me, it's a lot of things. It's um, cultural responsibility, self-responsibility, as you said, responsibility for your peers, for your people, and I just not at work, but throughout the community and your whānau. But responsibility for me is something that you can show and you can give back to people. Yeah, responsibility is huge for me because it means that you have a role to look after the others that you connect with and there's a responsibility to take care of not just their their learning and their development but their what we call wairua which is their spirit and also hininaro which is their mental and emotional well-being. So there's a whole kind of well-being that's about responsibility for me anyway which you need to look after the whole person if you only look after what you can 
and C could be missing a huge part of their makeup. And so it's really important to me. I take responsibility really seriously. So I'd love to talk about a leadership program, which I understand that you both have been a big part of and that has brought sort of you together in terms of being a part of each other's whānau. So Te Ara Whanaki is a program that builds on Māori leadership, the capability and confidence really as leaders, which is really good for Māori in business. So we look at it as a whole. You can take these leadership skills and go back to your whānau and outside work and build up communities with that. So it taught me a lot about how do I present myself and what does that look like. But learning that skill, <coughs> which I kind of already knew that I had that skill, but didn't recognise it, um, that energy is so important. It's so important to be present. It's so important to be there. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly right. It's about your presence and what what energy you're feeding out because um, like Julie's explained it very well, is finding out what you are made of, which kind of really made me think about what I look like at work, the way I dress, the way I held myself. I, I knew before then I was dragging my boots along into the, you know, into work, dragging my bag in, you know, throwing it around. Not a very good feeling when you see people like that. Um, this taught me to do things a little bit different about how do we build that relationship to instead of me being the one in front and telling you what to do, how do we do this as, as, as a whānau? How do we work as a team? How do I become a better leader and actually have people come with me instead of me just dragging them along and going, you must do this? So in launching the program, CEO Steve Colleen said, as we are growing a diverse business, I want our senior leaders to be more informed and educated when it comes to Māori protocols culture and history. What do you see as the importance of our senior leaders being informed about those protocols and culture and history and and understanding them? Very important. Very important. It's important to acknowledge it, but to walk the walk and talk the talk. I'm so grateful that they have taken yeah. us on, and I don't, I don't know of any other company that does that. Yeah, I guess having our senior management being able to understand the culture is empowering them, and it also values and promotes our indigenous culture. So Aotearoa, we have a bicultural nation which is founded on the Treaty of Waitangi, and so we have a document that's enshrined in legislation that says that we will support Māori culture and um, it's great that Downer has actually embraced that because then it becomes important for us where we come from is acknowledged so it makes us feel again if we go back to Fano, um, it makes us feel like we belong somewhere and that we can be empowered and that we're working for a company that actually values us which is really important so we belong there. So we have leverage from a whole lot of other Māori programs that support Māori in Downer in business and in the community as well. And with us, we've been given opportunities to actually give back to the program by being uh, facilitators. When we first started off Te Ara Whanaki, we'd always bring in guest speakers, especially to talk about what does Māori leadership mean to them. Now I'm one of those speakers and um, I take my son and, and it's not for me, it's it's not to make me look well or good, although I do give him a shoulder and nudge and say, <laughs> you know. 20 bucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but because he's actually my inspiration and the reason why I take him is because he inspired me when my mother passed away and we had to take her kawamate back to her marae, so take her spirit back. And so I asked a minister if he could be with us and he's like, sorry son, I can't make it with you fellas, I'm attending another tangi in town. So I walk back to the car and I get in the car, I sit down, my wife is in there and I'm like grabbing the steering wheel and I'm like, no, I'm not letting my mother down like this. My son, who was 13 at the time, was sitting in the back and says to me, dad, what's the matter? Says, we've got no one to speak on the marae for our son. He turns to me and says, I'll do it, dad. And I'm like, far out. Now, my wife and I understand why we put you fellas right through te reo Māori, right from when you were born. So sit beside my son, he gets up to kōrero and just about everyone in that marae is in tears to see him get up to do that for him, for all of us really, for his nan, for my mum, made everyone so proud. And that's why I, I take him with me to, to do these kōreros and give something back to the um, Te Ara Whanake alumni. That is amazing. What a story. Why does representation matter so much? That visible leadership for people to see, people like you leading and showing the culture in their day-to-day roles. 
um, I can just say that, you know, just within my lifetime, a lot of tikanga has changed. You know, I've been told, no, this is the new day and age now. This is how it goes. And what can you do to stop it? Um, yeah, I'm getting a bit emotional. <laughs> You're welcome to be emotional. I'd love to hear. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. My eyes are starting to well up. And yeah, it's just, yeah, just some sort of traditions that, yeah, I've been brought up with that are kind of like not broken, but just not upheld anymore. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, I think living living as a Māori, you carry a lot of ancestry with you. You know, there is a part of us that we honour and we respect. And as time moves on, we have to move with the times. And that's what Rob's talking about is like, you know, we have a whole lot of traditions, you know, and then nowadays it's changed. So being Māori in New Zealand and, and working with Dana, who has taken on the values of embracing the culture and um, the Treaty of Waitangi principles and moving in that direction to regain some of that tradition is really cool. We've got so many cool stories in our culture that explains really simple things but actually are really important to us. In our culture, if you sit down to have lunch and someone doesn't have lunch, you're like, hey bro, do you want some of my lunch? Or you'll just give them the lunch. You won't even ask them. You'll just give it to them. If you've got lunch, it doesn't mean it's yours. You can share it with everybody that's around you. Māori culture is an unspoken language. We learn, you know, like it's not written down. You don't sit in this classroom and you go, okay, so when this happens, you need to do this. We actually learn that as we grow up because our nans and our mums and dads tell us, you know, you just go and do that. Yeah, I think what means to me is upholding and keeping those traditions that we were taught going and passing them on to our kids, to our mokos and beyond. Still working through how do I be present as a female and Māori? How do I add value without damaging where we stand as women and where we stand in our culture? Because I think we do have a place in society and we do have a place in our own culture where we can be strong. For me, it's not just to the Māori, it's to everyone, is seeing other people called it all. And yeah, they get it wrong. They pronounce it wrong. But so what, man? At least you're trying. That's the biggest thing for me. I'd love for everyone to just try. I'd like to ask a little bit about that because I think a lot of people, and me included, uh, you know, we certainly don't want to be disrespectful to culture or to heritage and sometimes, you know, don't want to be in a position where we're asking too many questions or where we're mispronouncing words. What would you say to that? Oh, if it was mispronounced, I wouldn't get upset or anything. Yeah, you know? we, I had a manager which we had to do a presentation we have prepared and I'd written down a few notes and it said, kia ora or tēnā koutou. And he goes, oh, can I use that? And then I said, yeah, of course you can use it. So so he got up and he said it and it was so poor but everyone just went yay well done you know because he really made an effort and I was just cracking up laughing he just blushed but and I, he goes oh, I really need to learn that a little bit more and I said yeah because look at just by trying and attempting to do it they really respected him you know even though he got it wrong and didn't sound exactly right they definitely respected him because he gave it a go. Exactly right. I remember Steve Colleen at the Tapuni Kokiri prize to get up and say a mihi. And, and like, he's, it wasn't right, but it wasn't wrong. He gave it a go. And that was the heartwarming thing about it. And to be acknowledged by um, Willie Jackson and Willie thanking Steve for getting up there and, and doing it was a real accolade to Steve. In February this year, I was invited to compete at the Downer Masters Games for Wakaama. Wakaama is outrigger canoe, which is an integral part of the culture of Pacific people. And the whole day, Steve, you know, just embrace that whole culture. It's so cool to have the executives in an environment like that, down to earth with the people. And so he was just like the normal person, you know, and he fitted in really well. Being present and embracing the culture is really important. And for Steve and his wife to turn up and just to interact with all of us at that level it makes it so real you know you just want to embrace him and give him a hongi and, and he becomes our whanau you know there's an adage about being a good ancestor and there's a saying that says planting seeds that you may never see I would love to know what are you planting ready for the generations that follow you I really like that. I want to use it because that's the kind of stuff I do all the time, just plant seeds. And sometimes I don't see the fruits of it, but I want to plant seeds everywhere I go just to make people aware. Because, you know, you often see someone with talent and you go, oh my gosh, you are going to be so great if you continue to do this. And um, you can see that their confidence is enough. And so you want to plant the seed and like, hey, have you ever thought about this? You know, I've got a friend who is actually a, you know, motor mechanic and they started off at school 
they weren't that great and now look where they are. You know, I believe everyone I come across, I want to plant a seed with them. If they take it and run with it, great. It's just brilliant. But if they don't, at least hopefully it still sits in the back of their head and they go, hmm, someone actually told me that ages ago and maybe I should give that a go. I love it. Rob, planting seeds you'll never see grow. Oh, this kind of started a long, long time ago. It actually all started with a guy by the name of Zach Moriti. He was the only Māori sitting high up in the office. He came into a meeting one day and looked at a lot of us Māori and says, excuse the pun, I'm the only black bum sitting around this round table. I want to see more views into this round table. When the opportunity come up that an old supervisor of mine had left, a few of the guys at work were saying, man, you've done all this training, you've got all these skills, you've got these certificates that could, you know, really get me around that round table. Why don't you go for it? And so I said, well, nah, nah, I don't want to go for it. Why should I? They should come and approach me. It was that kind of attitude. And there was a young guy that got the job. The first thing, I'm just hating on him. I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to make your life hard, boy. A week later, we had our team up talks and I walk in and I'm cocky as, I'm, I'm like, yeah, i got a pay rise, i got this. And I look at the supervisor and I say to him, oh, what's going on? He says, well, I was going to do a team up talk, but I just want to say something. And I said, oh, what's that? He goes, you got a really bad attitude, don't you? I said, what the F do you mean? <laughs> and he goes, just like that. He goes, mate, but I'll tell you, you've got all the skills, you've got the knowledge, you've got more skills and knowledge than I will ever have. So I look at him and I'm fuming. So I get up and I storm out. I get home, I sit down at the table and I'm eating my dinner and I look at her and I say to her, my darling, do I have a bad attitude? She says, yes, you do. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? And she's like, well, why do you think your brothers and sisters don't come around? Why do you think your mates don't come around? And I'm like, well, I just thought it's good. No, <laughs> nobody to bother us. And, and that hit home for me to hear it from her. Kwa taka te kapa, the penny had dropped. And I asked her, I says, well, if I got a bad attitude, what do I have to do to turn it around? She says, well, you got to do something. So anyway, the first thing I think of is my language, cutting out my swearing and my thoughts of always thinking someone else is bad and, you know, just thinking the worst of other people. So I worked on that and I really, got my language under control when that uh, happened about three months later I didn't realize my actions were changing as well and three months later the supervisor that I had the team up talk with uh, pulled me aside and says man I've seen a really really big change in you I was like well really he goes so how would you like to be promoted to foreman and um, for two years we were probably the highest productive team in Gisborne man it was the change and, and to have as you say the seeds around me that were growing from there as those changes happen man the doors opened opened up because the first door was Te Ara Whanake. After Te Ara Whanake became the Chatham Islands, became a whole range of things. Going to Parliament to be one of the first 14 in the country to be awarded the Civil Trades Certificate and things just kept rolling from there and pretty much was like a um, turning point in a, even now talking to you fellas and doing this thing. It's amazing. Not and I really like the supervisor who had enough courage to stand in the gap to go, I need to talk to you about something. If he had never done that, Rob probably would be on a different path, you know, but he had the courage to stand up and go, we need to make a change. I think that it will always be a journey. And I believe that we, Julie, myself, you know, a lot of us that have already planted those seeds, whether if we knew it or not, not just at work, but in the communities as well. Yeah. I can definitely agree with that. And even today, you've planted so many seeds. And I'm sure as people are listening, as I have, they'll learn, they'll grow, they'll really understand. It's been such a pleasure hearing about your culture and your passion and about what you're doing to take active roles in the leadership in your communities and in your workplaces and also encouraging others. I loved hearing about how you celebrate when people are using the language, albeit not always in the way it's intended to be pronounced, perhaps, um, and how to you it's so important that it's carried on in those future generations and that all of these customs and ways of being continue and I think that you definitely have planted those seeds and they're things that will continue to grow on in your communities with your Wano, your amongst your entire community I certainly think so. So thank you so much for your time it has been such a pleasure Julie and Rob to speak with you today and to understand so much more about the Maori people and culture so thank you very much it's been such a pleasure. It's been Stay great talking safe. to you thank you. Thank you yep thank you very much. I hope that you enjoyed listening to this podcast as much as I enjoyed recording it. It was so interesting to hear of the Maori culture and of their traditions that have dated back for hundreds and thousands of years. 
And before we finish up, I would like to take the time to acknowledge the Yuggera people, the traditional custodians of the land where this episode has been recorded. Make sure you tune into next month where I speak to a brand new guest about a brand new topic as we continue to share, learn, connect. This podcast is now available on your favourite podcast app. Please share it with your friends and make sure to subscribe. And what that means is that you will get our episodes as soon as they drop. To finish this episode, we leave you with this incredible Hakka performance from our very own Downer employees, including Rob. Our producers are Darby Martinelli and Melanie Blows, and I'm Georgia Lutby. Thank you for listening. <laughs>